Damien Chazelle had such a vision of this musical film. And, and what was the vision initially? What were the initial conversations? Did you say, I want to do a grittier version of a musical or what? Damien developed this with two wonderful young producers, Fred Berger and Jordan Horowitz. They brought, thankfully, lucky me, <laughs> they brought me this script and... Because of I'm, your history in musicals? I or? think partially because of my history of musicals, I think because of, of being lucky to paint on large canvases as a producer and small canvases mm -hmm. as well. And um, um, I don't know what other reasons there, <laughs> but you know, hopefully the chemistry was right or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or whatever. I'm, this kid is so... He reminds me in some way, I mean, going from Stephen right to him, it's the same kind of focus, and he knows every shot of the film. So, uh, and he works so hard and with such love of filmmaking. He, and, and the thing I'll say about La La Land, if you see the film, is that you feel a kid, a filmmaker's love of cinema in every frame, because he loves right. what he does. So how can you not be joyful? It was the best movie-making experience. because. I mean, so, sorry? you're surprised by what you're joyful about because you don't expect. He told the story in a, such a unique, unexpected way. It was in his head in a really fluid and magnificent and vivid way where you felt transported. You could feel and taste the film. Who knows? Is this the start of something wonderful? Or With Damien, it was about protecting that vision. And when I saw it veer off, being able to say to him, you know, you wanted it to be blue and it feels like it's leaning into red mm. and shouldn't it be blue? It was about protecting him because his vision was singular. It's a kind of very singular film in terms of, Definitely. it doesn't have a lot of uh, films before it. It, it draws upon right. and pays homage, but the rules of his film are very specific to him, so it was about protecting that and protecting the outside world from, shouldn't the music have a little hip hop in it and shouldn't the it be this? So it was being very true to what the film is. I'm sure you've all had the experience sometimes where our partners, studios, or financiers, that the art by committee, everybody with great intentions and very smart people, but if they start wrestling the tone or the vision a little bit over on this side of the line, it, it can make for not a good film. And this film had to be so precise. Mm -hmm. And then it was about uh, helping him work with, um, quite frankly, movie stars. Right. He never really worked on that mm -hmm. sure. level before. And although an actor is an actor, there are some actors who have very strong points of view, have had mm -hmm. a lot of experience on films, and they bring that to the table. You all know that. And so uh, it was giving him the confidence to do that, being the bridge among the four of us, the, my two actors, and, and Damon when it, when it needed to be. So that's how that worked. What I love most is I get to sit and watch Steven Spielberg direct Bridge of Spies and watch a prodigious talent, yes. you know, come to the set every morning with a tie and be a half an hour early and be so excited at every shot and be like, well, that's joyful. And then I get to go to Ang Lee, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk, and watch him see things that none of us at this table can see. I mean, right. we'll see what the future bodes, but you know, he tried to uh, employ a new technology, yes. 120 frame, and to watch him experiment and evolve it was thrilling. And then to go to Damien Chazelle, such a singular young talent, who had such a vision of this musical film. Well, that's joyful. What's been your best day as a producer? The end of La La Land, the last day. It was completely joyful from beginning to end. This young filmmaker, Damien Chazelle, the sun is setting, and we're, we've really done the shooting, we're done. The sun is literally going behind the horizon, and he has a camera in his hand. He said, well, we can get another shot and another shot. And what I realized was he couldn't put the camera down. Mm. He was too sad, mm -hmm. genuinely. And it got pitch black. We were in Pasadena. Mm. And the whole crew was around, these lovely, this lovely crew, these lovely actors. And I walked up to him and I said, <laughs> you have to put the camera down. Yeah. There's no light. We had no lights because it was all day <laughs> shoot. I said, you ha and I gently took the camera from him yeah. and he had the saddest <laughs> look on his face. And I never forgot, I'll never forget that. Oh, really. on Pi, they took away my camera. <laughs> it, was, it had to be returned to the camera shop. <laughs> 
Hey, my name is Mark Platt, producer of the films Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk and La La Land. And I want to thank The Hollywood Reporter and uh, encourage you all to subscribe more to uh, YouTube videos from The Hollywood Reporter.